You are strong. All right, what's our word of the day? Reset! You are confident. If you go on our website and you click learn and grow, this is where I learned to build credit. You are gonna have a wonderful day. Little sis Libby Beat. Hey, little sis. Hi. I'm on the way, okay? Okay. Love you. Love you too. Since becoming a cafe coach, the biggest learning curve has just been, you are now responsible for the development of others. Capital One raised me in a way. I was 19 when I started Capital One, and I started um, down in our call centers in, in Richmond, Virginia. I started watching videos of the cafes, and I just remember just being mesmerized by the role of the ambassadors, how the cafes connect to the community, and how we are trying to help people in our communities to save more and stress less. Hey, baby. Hey. Being the oldest of 10 definitely has its learning curves. You have to naturally lead and your little brothers and sisters are looking, they're looking up to you. And I told you that you have a what that I built for you, that I had for you? Um, a savings account. Yes, um, we're gonna open the what for you? Teen account, yeah. So you can have your debit card and mm -hmm. be able to spend your money with a budget, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to meet mommy and our sisters at the park, okay? When I was a kid, I saw cash a lot, right? Didn't really see checkbooks, didn't see credit or debit cards, I saw cash. And so for me, that is what stuck with me. My biggest light bulb moment when it came to, to handling my money was when I moved to DC. We all know, you know, DC is not the most, um, you know, cheap place to live. And I just remember when I was apartment shopping, and I saw this apartment and it had all the sparkles and lights. And when I signed my lease, I knew I couldn't afford it. I remember this shirt. So it says, when I'm quiet, you better find me. And my mom to this day says that shirt still applies. Tell us about the glitz and glam and everything that you worked hard for, bless you, bless you. that you wanted and you got the beautiful high rise and you got the beautiful car. Like what's worth it in the end and what's not? That's a good question. It is. <laughs> I think that there was a point where I was trying to like have a lifestyle that I necessarily couldn't keep up with. I just remember like just meeting a friend. I hit rock bottom when I had to like ask her to borrow money to pay my rent. It helped mold me in a way where like I remember just sitting at home and saying like, you've got to be honest with yourself. And my mom only knew what she knew and mm -hmm. what she learned. So it was what I learned. So we just need to break the cycle. Yeah. Going forward, and this is what I'm doing with my little sisters, is just talking about money. The earlier that we start having these conversations with each other, with family, um, with friends, with your children, the earlier on that they'll be able to reach financial freedom. So I think that it just starts, it starts at the table. And so that as they grow up, it's fluent and it doesn't feel wrong or it doesn't feel forced and you don't feel embarrassed to talk about it with others. <laughs>